Hey there folks. So this episode I have decided to cover updating your project from 5.5 to 5.6 and just what is involved with it and what might end up being some bugs and stuff that come about because of API changes and stuff within Epic and the code for the engine itself. So to start off, the very first thing I always recommend, commit your project to source control first. Make sure everything has been committed. Do a dedicated commit as well. Uh, so like fork a branch off 5.5. I'm not going to go through all of that just because my source control, I use GitHub. I want to just keep my GitHub stuff private. Another thing you can do if you are not using source control, back up your project. You can back up the whole project folder or what I personally always do, even using GitHub, I back up my source folder. So right click on that, compress to, in my case, I'm just going to do a zip file. You can also back up your content folder as well. Now that can get rather large. That's where all your assets and everything are. Um, right now, I think this project's content folder is 20 some gigs. I'm not going to be backing that up. I am going to back up, obviously, as I mentioned, my source folder. That's all your code. If we open that up, uh, there's obviously the third party stuff that's been added in from projects well, sorry, from uh, asset packs I've added, but then there's all of the code that goes with it. So another thing I recommend is doing a full build right before just to make sure play test, do everything around that. I'm not going to show doing that because I've already done it. I've gone through, I've done a release build, I ran through, tested everything, make sure everything there is still the way I expect it to be. And the reason for that is you want to have your baseline of functionality before the update and then do it again after the update. So with that, once this is done compressing, so now that's done. All, literally, all I do is I do something like this, 5 underscore 5 underscore 5 underscore source. And then I copy that off. In this case, I'm going to copy it to my desktop. Uh, I believe I already have a copy of this. Yes, I do. I, I've gone through all of this once to this point. So that's why I've already backed this up. Uh, I realized my recording wasn't running. So... I'm just going to delete this because I do already have a copy of that on my desktop. Now, the next thing you're going to want to do on your project file, so your project dot you project, right click. Now, depending on the version of Windows or your operating system, this may be a little different, but with Windows 11, show more options. And then you have switch Unreal Engine version. Click on that and we're going to click 5.6 and click OK. Now this is going to do the same process that is done when you right click and generate project files. It's going to point it to the new engine version and it's going to regenerate all the project files that are relevant to that. This project or this process can take a bit of time depending on the size of your project, how many files you've got within your source code, things like that. Um, the fall, my project isn't huge um, in comparison, so it's not going to take a huge amount of time. But what I am going to do is I'm going to pause the recording and just let this process complete. And then I'll be back with the next step. All right, so that process has finished, went through and generated all the project files. The next thing we need to do is actually modify a couple of source files. So we're going to hop over to Visual Studio. So now we're in Visual Studio. You are going to notice your IntelliSense, if you're using Visual Studio, is going to be rebuilding because it has to recreate a lot of the information it had from the 5.5 .5 for 5.6. So you're going to see a lot of 
incorrect errors. Don't worry about that at the start. Now, I'm going to close out a bunch of these files here because we don't need half of these open. Give me one second here. I've got a lot of stuff open. All right, so the big one that you need to worry about is in your target.cs files. In here, you're going to see default build settings, build settings version v5 this one is fine the next one include order version engine include order version dot unreal 5 underscore 5 this we need to change you want this to be 5 underscore 6 helps if i don't hit shift and you need to do that in both the editor dot target dot cs and then project.target.cs you want to change both of these again holding shift and that is going to tell the compiler use 5.6 for lack of a better description there's more to it under the hood but that is the basic version like this is build with 5.6 now that you've done that you have technically changed over to your new engine version there is a lot more to it though at least my process the first thing we're going to want to do is run a build so i'm going to start that and i will be back once the build is done before i go actually i do recommend for this don't do it just from your project you want to do the whole solution so at the top my recommendation clean solution it's going to wipe out any compiled code that existed prior and the reason for that and l let me rephrase it it's not going to wipe out it's going to clear out any of the previously compiled code for 5.5 that could potentially get in the way this is a longer process, but this is something I do recommend doing with any engine upgrade. Now that that's done, again, through your build menu, rebuild solution. Now, what this is going to do is this is going to cause the engine source code to be recompiled with 5.6 for, sorry, the editor source code for 5.6 to be recompiled with your project. It's also going to cause your project to be recompiled under the 5.6. This will take some time, as I mentioned. You can see it's rebuilding a bunch of stuff. Then it'll get through to the project and everything there will get rebuilt. So I'm going to pause the recording. Once this rebuild is done, I will be back and we'll look at the next steps. All right, so as you can see here, everything was rebuilt successfully. Now, the next thing, uh, you have two ways you can go about this. You can launch the editor standalone if you want and go through and run some regression testing on your product, your project, I should say, and make sure everything is working. I personally, for this step, I do like to run it through my IDE. The reason for that is if there's any breaking bugs your ide may catch those and you can at least have a rough idea where those problems are so i'm going to launch into the editor from visual studio and i will be back once that editor has launched up all right so here we are in the editor as you can see everything's loaded in first thing i recommend you do here before looking at any of your blueprints or anything like that just click play in editor what this does is it forces a quick check of all of your existing blueprints to make sure if there's any errors or anything like that we had nothing there so let's run through and do a couple of quick tests on some of the stuff we've done recently like inventory pick that up uh, let's go over to the fire we'll light that Okay, you can see that the lights in effect, the particle system still being loaded, as you can see in the top left there, preparing Niagara systems. 
so it's gonna be a little janky until then there you go we got the campfire we'll pick up the mushroom that's working we'll check our inventory oh there we go dev test item count to drop got two dropped both of those get rid of our inventory i hit escape so that dropped out but at this point it does look like most things are working let's just quickly test the wolf yeah, he sees us, he is following us, he's attacking us, taking away our health, and now we're technically dead. So, this is a shorter episode, um, but as I've mentioned previously, I wanted to cover the process of updating your project from one version of the engine to... Well, technically, it's you could do this backwards as well. Like you could go from 5.6 to 5.5, 5, so on and so forth. But things start getting complicated when you start going backwards. There's a little more involved. But overall, the project itself has updated without issue. We have no bugs or errors. Everything seems to be working correctly. I'm going to quickly load into our persistent level. And this is the one that we're going to just test our level lo load process quickly. So it'll be the persistent level to the main menu. And then from there, we'll do new game. But as I was saying, the whole purpose for this episode was literally quickly cover the process that I follow, at least for updating an engine version. I don't tend to do this too often. And then one of the other things you need to consider as part of that process is, do I need to update? Do I have a breakpoint here that I missed? Um, but anyway, so do I, yes, that was it there, breakpoint. Um, do I need to update? Is there something that is specific to the new version that you need like oh we got an issue there I have to look into that but yeah um do i have to update to 56 do i have to update to 57 have they added in new functionality i want to make use of things like that updating to a new version isn't something you should just do because of it um you should be doing that to get something out of it not just because the new version is there uh, okay, let's, um, yeah for some reason it's not being moved to that in time we'll address that in another episode though but anyways folks that's where i want to end things here this was just a really short video on how to update from in this particular case 5.5 .5 to 5.6 um, I've chosen to do that because there is a lot of functionality in 5.6 that I want to take advantage of. So, as always, if you have any comments, questions, concerns, suggestions, please feel free to leave them in the comments below. Uh, hop over on the Discord. Respond to things on Discord a little quicker just because I get notifications about that more reliably than I do on YouTube. But as always, thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next episode.